Yo, what up, Lucid Crew? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Lucid Rob, and today we're gonna look at videos from all over the internet, videos that you send me to try to figure out what's what's going on. What's going on today? What's going on in the world right now? There's so much stuff. There's there's the eclipse, there's CERN starting back up, there's P. Diddy, or P. Diddy, P. Diddy, Diddy, didn't he do it? I don't know. I don't know, there's too much going on, but it's all a distraction. I'm convinced, and this next video is gonna show you why. Are y'all paying attention? Do you see this behind me? Russian warships are now entering the Red Sea, but that's not all. Do y'all remember when I just showed you that Assad welcomed Putin to build bases in Syria, but more specifically, in the Eastern Golan Heights, the one-third of the region that Syria claimed? Any military analyst that's watching this situation knew it was a bad omen when Putin put a base right here. Well now Russia is claiming that all of Golan Heights belongs to Syria and they are trying to push out allegedly the IDF and the other groups. At the same exact time they have all these ships in the Red Sea. Don't forget we still have Eisenhower in the Red Sea. Now with all this going on I want to put you in remembrance of the dream that God gave me about this exact situation in September of 2022. It was one of my first videos and I posted it in December of 2022. And everything I'm about to say in this video was unheard of at the time. Everyone thought the Russian thing was going to blow over, especially not get to the Middle East. And I had another dream. I saw very, 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 very vividly, I saw a white horse. And it was holding um, like a Iranian type blade. I googled it and found it. This was a sword the horse was holding. I heard the voice of God. And he told me that US and NATO were the horse. The white horse was given a bow and crown, and he went forth to conquer. After I saw the horse, I heard God, I saw the sword, I saw the horse, I saw it in midair, and it was going right towards Russia. After that, that still voice told me that Russia was going to attack Israel. Now, seeing how all this stuff is transpiring in Golan Heights, don't forget, Benjamin Netanyahu made Trump Heights, a place in memory of Donald Trump. I find that a really odd coincidence. And of course, all this stuff is transpiring right before the eclipse. Does it mean anything? I don't know. Tell you, man, everything is a distraction. Every single thing. And I'm not saying that these people aren't really doing the stuff like, you know, like, like P. Diddy or, you know, anybody else that's, that's being accused or caught admitting to doing like terrible things. I'm not saying they're not doing it. Uh, I'm just saying that I think they know about it forever, right? Like the law enforcement, the CIA, FBI, whoever, whoever's holding these people accountable. I think they know about it the whole time. I think they just wait to strategically release the information to distract us from larger events that we should be paying attention to in order to give our attention to it, to either like, you know, speak up and talk against it or try to do something to prevent it or something. But man, pop culture and the media and stuff, it's just, it's got such a firm grasp on our nutsack nowadays to where it's just like, that's all, that's all we care about is like celebrities. I don't know. More people just need to get their head out of the TV, worry more about their lives and improving their lives and less about, you know, reality TV and the view <laughs> and, and uh, whatever publications that just talk about celebrities in their lives start paying more attention to the real events that actually affect ours all right guys here we go check out this crazy looking ufo footage there are so many of these ufos in the sky like what do you all think this is if you really watch you can see some of them go flying up down all over the place are these genuine ufos or do you think it's something else We'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this one. Hit me up in the comments. Yeah, now it's dissipating, it's going away. Yeah, 
meteors. They weren't close, or they're leaving. It's pretty crazy that they were blinking like that. I don't know if it was drones or if it was Starlink or or what, but I just <laughs> watched the uh, the new show on Netflix called The Three Body Problem about aliens. Awesome books, by the way. I've only read the first one, but the show's the show's really good so far. There's one part in the show where it says the Have you ever seen the sky wink at you, and the stars like flicker like that? Uh, and that show just came out, and this clip is new, so that's another thing, man. That's another thing that's that's strange and uh, serendipitous. Or coincidental. The fact that this was discovered hiding under a painting during a renovation of a cathedral in Naples says it all. Another sloppy cover-up of our true past at work. I think they tried to cover up giants and dragons, griffins, and a lot of other creatures. Yet they did such a sloppy job, they just ended up calling them mythical creatures. But isn't it odd, the Chinese zodiac has all real creatures but one and the fact that so many of our cultures all across our realm share the same depictions of dragons much like they do giants and many other creatures these artists drew exactly what they saw And you can still find some mud fossil remains. Like here's the dragon head cave in Egypt. This world is vastly different than what we've been told it was. And why cover up dragons? It's the same reason why they lied to us about all of our history. Those unaware of their true past and their true origins are all that much easier to control. Perhaps dragons explain some of those melted castles. And just look what our old dictionary said about dragons. Now rare. What's weird about that? Um, I'd love to believe in dragons. Um, I think that'd be super cool. Dragons, giants, all that stuff. I, I love fantasy. Fantasy and sci-fi. Love it. Love it so much. If I could live inside the world of The Witcher, sign me up. I'm in. But I've seen so much stuff lately about dinosaurs being fake. Things about maybe dinosaur bones being constructed from giant bones reconstructed from chicken bones which they they do for the museums i guess in order to you know not display the actual bones they found uh, i don't i don't want to not ever believe in dinosaurs but for dragons like i wonder if those people that think dinosaurs are fake also believe that dragons were once real because dragon could have just been a, a form of dinosaur right i don't know it's interesting how many of these conspiracies just like butt heads right they just they just butt heads they kind of cancel each other out. Giant flying cities in the sky, said to roam the heavens like celestial chariots. Legends of ancient nuclear weapons capable of incinerating entire civilizations, whispered across the sands of time. Vimanas, ancient flying machines described in the sacred texts of civilizations long lost to the sands. Described in the Sanskrit texts of Hindu and Buddhist traditions, Vimanas are flying machines that defy conventional understanding. These ancient accounts portray Vimanas as a fusion of modern stealth aircraft and flying saucers, capable of extraordinary feats such as interplanetary travel and high-speed maneuverability. The descriptions of Vimanas bear striking similarities to modern technological concepts such as stealth aircraft and ion thruster propulsion systems. NASA's current research into ion thruster type spacecraft powered by solar energy and utilizing mercury particles echoes the propulsion methods hinted at in ancient texts. Some theorists propose that Vimanas could be evidence of ancient extraterrestrial influence on human civilization. The parallels between Vimana descriptions and modern aerospace engineering hint at the possibility of advanced knowledge imparted by extraterrestrial visitors. Some dismiss Vimanas as mere allegory, while others believe that these ancient marvels were more than just stories. Legends speak of epic battles waged in the heavens, where Vimanas clashed like thunderbolts amidst the roiling storms of war. Were these battles fought with weapons of mass destruction, or were they merely figments of a collective imagination? As humanity peers through the veil of time, searching for answers to the mysteries that shroud our past. One thing remains certain. The enigma of Vimanas continues to captivate the imagination, 
inviting us to journey into the realms of the unknown. What a cool video. The uh, aesthetic and everything was just awesome. I totally believe that there have been different iterations of civilizations with different levels of technology over the entirety, the lifespan of, of Earth or whatever other planet we came from if we came from somewhere else prior to being here. And it totally makes sense to me that there was technology like that. Um, I'm not sure at what level that we know of or what level I even I even truly think, but I do think there was some aspects of technology that was higher than what we have now and other areas probably not. Um, I talk about this when it comes to aliens and stuff as well. People say, why would they be interested in our planet? And I basically say, because just because they may develop further in some areas doesn't mean that they develop further in other because their priorities would be different based on their atmosphere and their, you know, what they need to do to survive and, you know, their environment and whatnot. So they have every reason to be interested in us, but that's a different conversation. But same same case here, right? If it's an ancient civilization, they have different different things they have to worry about based on, you know, where they live, what they're their goals are as a, a civilization, a community, progressing in one area and less in an area of actual surviving and wasn't able to, you know, prevent being wiped out by some natural disaster or nuclear event or whatever. But it makes total sense. It makes total sense now that uh, just knowing that, you know, Nikola Tesla was getting close to, you know, redeveloping some of this ancient technology and the stuff that they think the guy at the Coral Castle used. Look up Coral Castle if you're not familiar with that. Um, basically use levitation. He said it was ancient Egyptian technology that they used to build the pyramids and just a whole bunch of different stuff. And it makes sense that they're hiding it and keeping it from us and not letting us do it now uh, like they did. Basically, the investors shut down Nikola Tesla's research. They, they stopped funding it when they realized that it was an actual possibility of it working because they realized that it would cut into profits and it would disallow them to charge for energy if energy was just, you know, in abundance and free, right, for everyone to use. So... I think that's kind of how it is in every area of our lives. We're like, oh, we can make money off this. We can we can fix this. We can make this free. We can cure this, so on and so forth. But then we can't make money off it. So, no, let's hide this. And it's sad. It's sad to think or even to know and be as confident as I am <laughs> that our past and our history and our, our potential progression toward the future is hidden uh, just strictly from greed. It sucks. This beach is not a beach. It's actually a glacier. There was a drop-off that went down between five and six meters, so not too deep. And at the bottom, there was black sand. Down at the bottom, it felt like I was floating in the stars, in the sparkles. It was totally crazy. Totally crazy. It's incredible! That's good. It's like beautifully sculpted marble. The ice is so pure. It's extraordinary. But after about 200 meters, shapes start appearing on the screen. And what I'm seeing, about 20 meters below, is a geological interface that's very strong, very clear. This beach is not a beach, it's actually a glacier. There's a significant amount of ice that's trapped in the valley and no longer moving. That's weird. That's very strange. It's crazy how many different like ecosystems there are, right? Like different worlds, like just like that deep under the ice, just like four or five meters under the ice. It's like, looks like a completely different world or just like a few meters under the water, right? It's, it's just a completely different world for the beings that live there, the species that live there. And it's just completely otherworldly to us, you know, based on our life and, and the environment that we live and navigate every day. So that's the reason why 
I think that like inner earth is such a great possibility, I guess. I'm not saying like, I'm not saying it's like the complete core of the earth, like the center of the earth is supposed to be like molten rock, but I think like deep down enough, you know, people could live closer to where it's like warmer, like on the, like during the ice age or however they got there. But, uh, Admiral Byrd that said he flew into Antarctica, into the earth and it was like green and plush, like buildings and, and whatnot. I could totally see that'd be the case. Cause I think it's in Thailand or the Philippines. Uh, don't quote me on this. It's an Asian somewhere. But basically, it's like a cavern that, like a cave that, that you can go into. And it's literally like a rainforest, like underground. It's insane. So I, I think it's totally possible for uh, there to be like other worlds that we probably don't even know about, you know, in the earth. So I'm going to need some context, some contextual evidence as to why you think that just based off of those images you sent me. You know, Galactic Federation. Whatever layer this is, is way the heck up there. Now, this is what I'm seeing from like person size perspectives. any closer. I don't really want to be like right below it either, so this is about as high as I want to go. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is one of the most beautiful things in the world. <laughs> Holy heck. You know those were mountains peeking through the clouds, right? That's what that was. Enki, also known as Ea in Akkadian and Babylonian mythology. Renowned as the god of water, knowledge, and creation. A principal deity, Enki's story is rich with tales of innovation, wisdom, and cunning. He is credited with the creation of mankind, the establishment of Eridu, the first city of Sumer, as well as the development of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers through a network of canals. According to interpretations of Sumerian texts, Enki played a pivotal role in the creation of humans. The Anunnaki, including Enki, were in search of resources on Earth. Faced with labor challenges, Enki proposed the creation of a worker species to alleviate the Anunnaki's burdens. Using his advanced knowledge in genetics and biology, he engineered humans as a hybrid species. This process involved the genetic manipulation of the Anunnaki's DNA with that of Homo erectus, the most advanced terrestrial species at the time. Enki's expertise in science enabled this ambitious project resulting in the birth of Homo sapiens, beings capable of performing the tasks needed by the Anunnaki, while also possessing a degree of sentience and intelligence. Enki's relationship with his creation was complex and multifaceted, Unlike some of the Anunnaki who viewed humans merely as servants, Enki developed a paternal and protective attitude towards humanity. This emotional attachment is highlighted in numerous myths, where Enki intervenes to guide, protect, and even educate humans. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, Enki plays a crucial role in the tale of the Great Flood, a narrative echoed in various cultures worldwide. It is here we witness Enki's defiance of the decision made by the Anunnaki Council to let a catastrophic flood wipe out human civilization. Moved by compassion, Enki chose to save Utnapishtim, the Sumerian equivalent of Noah, by warning him about the impending deluge. 
he instructed him to build an ark capable of saving his family, along with a collection of animals and plant species to ensure the continuity of life post-flood. Enki's actions in this tale underscore his rebellious nature and his willingness to challenge the consensus of the gods to protect humanity. The representation of Enki as a serpent or being associated with serpents is a recurring motif in ancient cultures, symbolizing wisdom, life, and rejuvenation. This symbolism reflects Enki's role as a bringer of knowledge and enlightenment, akin to the serpent in the biblical story of Adam and Eve. This serpentine symbolism extends beyond Mesopotamia, appearing in various cultures and mythologies around the world from the feathered serpent Quetzalcoatl in Mesoamerican cultures to the Naga in Hindu and Buddhist traditions, the serpent emerges as a symbol of wisdom, healing, and connection to the divine. These global serpent motifs may trace back to a collective memory of Enki, his deeds, and his association with the fundamental aspects of life and knowledge. In weaving together these narratives, we uncover a tapestry of myth and speculation that challenges our understanding of ancient history and the origins of civilization. We was created by aliens, y'all. Woo! I knew it. I knew it. It's actually the creation story that I uh, I believe. Uh, I had a roommate years ago that was uh, super into this stuff. I mean, I'm talking like 2008, 2009. Uh, so I actually read the book of Enki by Zacharias Kitchen in... Well, like 2010 or something, 2009, I read it. Uh, always super interesting stuff, but I didn't really start taking it too serious until recent years, actually. It just makes more sense, right? It makes more sense that way, to me anyway. I just think that uh, there are a lot of stories that are very similar, and some stories just, just tell more details than others. So I think collectively, every religion is telling the same events. You know, every... Every all the mythology from you know Greek to you know Rome to Mesopotamia to the Aztecs to Christianity Catholicism I think a lot of the the stories are very similar because they're things that actually happen just different eyewitness accounts different experiences different parts of the world uh, and also just different knowledge different information being passed down through generations right that kind of gets maybe a little jargled and and mistold or emphasized differently or was kind of gassed up right to, to even in some areas to seem like more happened than it did but i think overall we can agree that we likely didn't happen by chance right we likely didn't happen by chance there's a creator of some sort and we just don't know who he is yet for sure and anybody that says they know for sure is uh is a little too confident in my book uh, it's okay to question things so that's why we're all here but yeah either way aliens baby aliens let's go <laughs> Three days of darkness, let me tell you everything that I know, and Lord knows I do not want to make this video. I don't like to speculate, and I'm not given to internet conspiracy theories, but I have something that I have to tell you. I do see something here. I've been seeing it here for a long time. It's time to come clean. I moved my family out of Alaska because of a gut feeling. It wasn't the only reason. It was just the first one that caused me to look for all the rest. Maybe it's silly. Maybe none of this is true. But it bothered me so bad that I moved my family out of Alaska. This article was ran by Forbes over six years ago and can only help you speculate. This is the Edgar Casey map, a clairvoyant communing with demons to see the future. Potentially total garbage. Only I don't think it is. Because this makes some kind of sense to me that I cannot explain. Now until very recently, and I mean this month, I did not know that there was a correlation between total solar eclipses and devastating earthquakes. And now that I do, <sighs> the plot is getting real thick, fam. In September of 1811, a total solar eclipse took this path through the United States. And in December of 1811, the New Madrid fault line popped off in a series of devastating earthquakes that lasted all the way through into January. Now the scientists say there is increased earthquake activity in the face of new moons. A new moon being required for a total solar eclipse. There is a scientific correlation there that seems to have everything to do with causation. But it was three months after the eclipse. What's your point? If a barge goes under a bridge and hits one of the supports and damages it, there might be 2,000 vehicles roll over the bridge before it gives out, is what I'm saying. So that the new moon of a solar eclipse is like a barge passing under a bridge and hitting one of the supports. 
This is the path the total solar eclipse took in July 1963. Funny thing, it passed right through Talkeetna, Alaska, where my family and I lived, long before we were born. And then in March of 1964, a devastating earthquake tore Anchorage all to pieces. Solar eclipse is not an instant trigger, it's more like a fatal wound to the fault line. Doesn't mean there's going to be a terrible earthquake after every total solar eclipse. But every total solar eclipse affects the fault lines they pass over because of that new moon, scientifically. Whether I explain these events spiritually or physically, they are true, both ways. It is the spiritual producing the physical. After the total solar eclipse of 1811, there was a series of devastating earthquakes, followed by years of decline straight into the Great Depression. Followed by the Great Depression, did you hear? Do total solar eclipses just mean earthquakes? No. They affect more than just fault lines. They warn of much more than just earthquakes. Look, if I could make this stuff up out of my own mind, I'd be God. Get it? But instead, look at us. Us little bitty babies just learning about his creation. Don't even know how it works. So, rut row, what the stink is that? Converging right over top of the new Madrid fault. I mean, can you say X marks the spot? What is going on there? This is the path of the solar eclipse from August 21st of 2017. Well, nothing happened after that one, did it? It didn't warn of anything at all. Y'all forget about COVID and every single thing that has happened to our country since then? That wasn't enough to get your attention, get your minds right? Well, this is the path of that solar eclipse that's about to happen on April 8th. And the very spot where it crosses the path of the last one is the new Madrid fault line. Y'all don't see that right there? If you do not believe in God and only believe in science, that right there is alarming, bruh. And I mean, call the National Guard. See if they can stop it. <laughs> Time for a Bible punch in the mouth. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Y'all think that's a random coincidence? This is the scientific prediction should that fault line pop off. Should that new Madrid fault line pop off right there, this is the prognosticator's view of what the future topography of the United States of America is going to look like. Now I'm not saying that this is going to happen at all, only that it would make great and terrible sense to me if it did. I am no authority on this subject as far as men are concerned. I got two years of videos you can scroll though and decide for yourself whether I have authority and where it might be from. And still, that's not to say that this is true or false. Only that it makes sense to me, but who am I? The scientists have no authority whatsoever to tell us how it's actually going to happen, and neither do I know exactly how it's going to play out in the details. We are all speculating on what exactly it's going to be. It is God who is in control of what it will be. But he gave us plenty of potential to consider in the face of world history. In March of 2011, a 9.1 undersea megathrust earthquake occurred in the Pacific Ocean, 72 miles off the coast of Japan. In July of 2010, there was a total solar eclipse that passed over the Pacific. Why would this affect Japan at all? Oh snap, this is the ring of fire and that total solar eclipse went exactly this way. And that megathrust earthquake hit Japan this way. Oh, there's a pattern, a recurring series of events here. A pattern I did not know when I got the gut feeling to move my family out of Alaska. Not that that counts for anything. Except with me, I trust my gut. Do you know if they knew all the variables, they could predict all of the earthquakes too? It's on a schedule. What's funny is when I made that first sign of Jonah video, I wasn't thinking about any of this at all. Not considering this as a potential for anything, I was thinking World War III is on our doorstep, you know, and it is. The economy goes down, maybe a new round of disease, which thing is pestilence. Oh, snap, if pestilence followed the 2017 eclipse, is there some way to know where we are on the timeline of what it mean, what eclipses mean, or, you know, what's following them specifically, each one? Probably, I haven't looked at that yet, but I'm pretty sure, you know, you'd find it. Because wouldn't that make sense? Three days of darkness, as we're all hearing about it, is based on a false private prophecy wherein in three days of darkness, the Catholic Church's enemies will all be destroyed. And that might sound good on the surface, but they got that whole idea from the Bible to begin with, and men have been making false prophecies out of stuff they got in the Bible this whole time. Internet conspiracies also need not apply, because they're so chock full of disinformation, it's hard to sort it out, you know? 
Three days of darkness was one of the plagues that descended on Egypt during the Exodus. Precluding the Exodus. Does that mean we're about to get an Exodus? I stink and hope so, I really do. Does it mean we're gonna get a revival? Well, man, that's what I would surely love. Does it mean we're going into the wilderness? Well, that's what comes with it. Don't complain about the lack of onions and don't ask for no geese. In the wilderness, they wanted geese. God gave them geese. Everybody that ate goose died. Y'all think this is a game based on your pleasures and desires? It is not. This surely means something rather than nothing. I can't tell you exactly what's gonna happen. I am ignorant of far too much. I can tell you exactly what there is to do about it though and how to prepare entirely. The only way to prepare for what is gonna follow this. It ain't stacking up food, water, and ammo. It's not fortifying your shelter. It's not preps. Nobody's promised tomorrow whether there's a calamity or not. What are you preparing for? That was intense. <clears throat> so that was a very long video. Uh, I was gonna cut it down. It's a very long video. I was gonna cut it down, but it was just super interesting. That guy's name on TikTok is dead underscore hidden, D-E-A-D underscore H-I-D-D-E-N. Really cool stuff, man. Really cool stuff. Thanks for sharing. I don't know what's going to happen either, man. I don't know what's going on with this eclipse. There's a lot of crazy stuff happening right now, not just in the world, just like surrounding this eclipse. Say it's going to potentially knock out power, potentially knock out our internet. I mean, NASA's shooting rockets at it, like three of them they've confirmed for research purposes. CERN starting back up the same exact day. I don't know what's going to happen in a couple days, guys. I mean, it's April 3rd right now. So five days, man. I guess we'll find out. But no matter what happens, you know, stay safe. Pack up some food and water. I mean, I have a 72-hour bag right by my front door just ready to go. Uh, they say that, uh, you know, if things happen, things shut down, you have 72 hours before all hell breaks loose and people start getting desperate and scared and, and doing what they do and when they panic so uh just make sure you're prepared man be ready for anything take care of each other i mean i hope we're still around to uh watch my next video <laughs> after we live through it so this is feeling very mayan calendar you know 2012 and it's a very unsettling feeling i think this is actually kind of worse for me anyway everything just feels very strange anyway thanks for watching guys lucy crew you guys are great my subscribers my members uh you guys that donate to the channel and are super helpful i appreciate you guys greatly uh, if you have videos you want me to see, join the Discord. The link is down in the description. And until next time, guys, take care of yourself. Stay safe. Uh, stay awesome. Life is cool even when it's not. Keep in mind that, uh, you know, we're all here to enjoy it. But we're all here to, to, to help each other while we're here, too. So uh, take care of each other. Peace.